Hello everyone, welcome to our live show. We're just waiting for Maria to get on and then we can get started. So because we're going to be talking about insecurity and just building your self-confidence, of course you have to play pretty good. Here's Maria. Let's just get her in. Can you see me? Can you hear me? Are we good? Can you hear and see me? Yes, I can. Okie dokie. I'm here. How are you? Happy Wednesday. Happy Wednesday. Let me tell you this. I really do appreciate our lives being on Wednesday. Yes. I think this should be our day. Yeah. Because top of the week could be really heavy for me because I'll be thinking I'll be doing the most, mm -hmm. you know. And then, like, Wednesday, I was like, oh, like, yesterday, I was like, wait, do I have to go live tonight? I was like, okay, no. That was me, too, like, yesterday. Right? I was like, ooh, I feel like I'm missing something. <laughs> I was like, all right. But I was like, okay. So I feel like Wednesday should be, like, the Embracer Legacy show days. Right. It used to be. Mm -hmm. Remember that was the day we used to drop our, um, our podcast episodes on Wednesdays? Yeah. I feel like it's just, like, in the middle of the week. It's a good pick-me-up. So. Yeah, it's, it's 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 a good time. It's a good time. A time is to be had. Right. I'm ready mm -hmm. for the next conversation. I told my homegirls to get on because we have a lot to unpack today. Right, and I feel like this is such a like a uh, popular uh, topic outside of the relationships, honey. Because you know everybody want to talk about relationships, but I think like. And love and stuff and everybody got something to say but I think something about self-assurance and confidence I think this is like super important so be ready yeah. um, you want to wait a little longer to let the people roll in or are you ready to get started I guess we could just, just get started I mean you know if you want to give the people 30 more seconds you know. 30 more seconds just enjoy Carrie <laughs> I know, right? We call her Miss Carrie. I love that song. Really? <laughs> I love that song. I think Carrie Hilson is too pretty, too. Like, I think she's, like, one of the most, like, under... Like, we don't hear a lot about Carrie mm -hmm. Hilson, but I think she's so, like... She's popping. She's cute. And I love her, her movies. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, her movies be lit, 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 lit. lit. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So, I love that. Yeah. Yep. Hello, are, everyone. We are. We are getting about to get started. So I guess our 30 seconds is up. Okay. And we could, okay. yeah, I guess we can get the show started. Right. Right. Mm -hmm. Well, hello, everyone. We are back again. Embrace a Legacy with our amazing live show. And before we get started, because it is the month of March, I want to wish all of my legendary women out there a happy Women's History Month. We are all so dope. Thank you for all that you do. And just keep doing your thing because we love it. <laughs> Tonight, we're going to be talking about how to deal with self-doubt, lack of confidence, and rejection, and how we can turn that feeling of insecurity into being self-assured. And if you don't know, Embrace the Legacy talks a lot about our inner saboteur. Mm -hmm. And if you don't know what that is, that's that little voice inside your head that tries to tell you that you can't, even though you can, and tries to tell you all these negative things about yourself that aren't true. So tonight, we're getting rid of her. She's okay. going away. <laughs> mm -hmm. And of course, like always, I'll be having this conversation with our founder and CEO, Maria Melendez, who is truly our inspirational homegirl. And if you like what we do, you like our live show, and you want to keep up with us, then follow us on all of our social media platforms, TikTok, Facebook, all that jazz. And of course, make sure that you subscribe to our Patreon page, where we have exclusive Embrace Her Legacy content for all of our professional queens out there. Mm -hmm. And we have something fresh and fun. If you or someone that you know is 14 to 19 years old and want more guidance on how to step into the young woman that you want to be, then apply to our summer institute program that will be happening this July right in NYC. Yeah. I want to be like, I, I kind of want to be real Brooklyn and do like, boy, up, boy, up, but I'm not. I'm not going to do that. I'm not. I'm not. I'm not. But good job, Isis. Isis Thank is, you. is really getting good at these intros. Oh my Yo. God. Look at you, honey. And if anybody. Everybody needs a link to our Patreon or to the application to send to anyone you know or you want to apply or have more info. It is pinned down below. Take a screenshot, do your thing. <laughs> Boom. All right. I love it. This is good. 
Thank you. This is really giving life. So, okay. <laughs> we are elevating. Everything mm -hmm. is coming to going to the next level. You see it on our social. You'll see a lot of cool things coming down the line. We're, you know, it's time to grow right. and graduate. <laughs> Well, I definitely want to get started. Let's unpack, get down to the nitty gritty. Are you ready? I am ready. And I know I took a lot of notes and I have some like, uh, some other things I'm going to share with, with the people. So I'm okay. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay. So the first question that I have, and I really want to hear your answer to this, what steps can you give to yourself to have more confidence and to have more trust in yourself? Okay. So this is a lot. Okay, I want everyone who's watching this to understand that this is a jam-packed conversation mm -hmm. and we're not going to figure, you're like, you're not going to figure it all out tonight. So I'm going to, I'm probably going to be sharing a lot more than I would have because I was trying, mm -hmm. I was looking at the question, I was like, oh my gosh, there's so much to share, but confidence is definitely like a muscle. And you have to work on it to get stronger. Mm -hmm. Like you get what I'm saying? So if, if, if I were to like, I, I work out, right. But let's say I were to go on a, I don't know, let's say I were to do like a really extreme workout tomorrow mm -hmm. with, you know, weightlifting and all this other stuff. You better believe that my muscles are going to be sore on Friday. And why is that? That's because I haven't worked on those muscles. All those muscles are being worked out in a new way that those muscles are not used to being worked out. So mm -hmm. that's what I say with confidence is something that's going to muscle that you have to work on. And the more you work on it, the stronger you will get at it, right? And mm -hmm. another caveat, it just might take some time and it's a lifelong thing. I don't think we ever, the way we're creative as human beings, there's going to be days that you know you may feel a little less confident than others is going to be situations and moments and circumstances but the thing is how do i have a healthy relationship with myself and whatever insecurities that were once there because i'm not going to claim those but those those i guess areas of improvement how do i deal with that in a healthier way and how do i you know, get back up. So the first thing I would say when it steps to like building your confidence and more trust in yourself is first, I would write down all my strengths and what you do and what you've done well. Mm -hmm. And I know a lot of people think that's hard. If I ask people what's wrong with them, they will probably give me a list of 50, 100, 50 million thousand things. But if I ask you what's right and what you like about you, that list tends to be a loader, so a little bit less. So I would say start writing out what you like about yourself, what are your strengths. And if you don't know and you're like, dang, a good thing is to talk to people or snap people. Talk to some people who know you well, who trust you and who love you, who can say, this is what you do well. This is what I love about you. Not necessarily putting your worth or your meaning and what other people say about you, but there is, there is. Oh, I can hear you. Timer went out. Um, so there's a benefit in beauty in talking to people because they may see things about you that you don't see about yourself. And mm -hmm. it's something, it's a, it's amazing. There's actually a, an assessment, a leadership assessment. I took called 360 leadership assessment. And I didn't know, I, I know this sounds arrogant, but it's not in the same way because I didn't know how dope of a leader I was until I took that assessment and everybody was like, yeah, you do this. I was in here like, I am horrible. I'm this and this and that. But that gave me more confidence in my leadership ability when I took this assessment because I had to share that assessment with other people and people were asking, you know, they were kind of like rating my leadership, right? So it was really, so that's the benefits of sometimes talking to people who love you, who know the, who have the best interest in your heart to say, hey, what, what are my strengths, right? So now you can start building confidence in yourself. Write down your areas of improvement, right? We all have them, whatever areas are secure, whatever. And then instead of magnifying your weaknesses, I would say start focusing on making your strengths stronger, 
right? So if I, I heard my pastor say say this other book, there was this book that he was reading. I forgot. I think it was Discovery of Strength. I forgot the name of the book. But um, pretty much the there was a book, and the coach was coaching like some type of ping pong um champion. And I don't know about ping pong, but pretty much he was really strong on his right hand and horrible at his left arm, at his left hand, right? And instead of the coach focusing on making the left hand stronger, he just focused on making that right strength, right right hand thing so so strong that the uh, player would never have to worry about using his left hand. So I think that that's what this focus laser focus on sh on what you're good at and building on that and understanding and identifying your weaknesses or the things that you are insecure about, but not embracing them, but not making an excuse to say that like, all right, cool. I know that this might be a trigger for me, but you know, things like that. Um, yeah. And then I would say another one and trusting yourself, learn to trust your instincts. I think so many of us don't do a good job at that. Um, well, if you feel it in your chest, if you feel it in your gut, in your spirit, in your soul, trust that. And, and, and trust that you can make good decisions, which should be rooted in your values and what's most important to you. Once you grow and you start to understand who you are, what are your values, and you can start to then make good decisions aligned with your values, you'll learn to trust your decision making and trust in yourself and you'll learn to trust in your gut, trust your instincts. And honestly, that may come with trial and error because you will get it wrong. There's been times that I've said I've learned there's been times where I knew something was off about someone and I didn't trust my instinct and then I learned that I should have trusted my instinct, right? Like, something's not right. If you ever have that feeling like, mm, something's not right, I don't care if it's you going out on a, one night, mm -hmm. I'm going to tell you a story. I got into a car accident not trusting my instincts because I was, I was I, this is a caveat, maybe this was somebody for somebody to hear this. This is one night, this is almost, God, 2011, summer night, Brooklyn night, setting the scene up for y'all. I'm already on my way home. Um, I get a call from one of my, um, one of my, one of my homeboys at the time and my homeboy and my homegirl were dating. So going to their house was like our Saturday night thing. Like we would go hang out, whatever, blah, blah, blah. So I, I they get on the phone any other time, they'll be like, oh, Maria, come over and I'll come through, no problem. That night, I felt something say, Maria, don't go. Like, I had a, a, a thing that Maria should stay home. Didn't follow that. Went out. Everything was fine. When I came back home in a cab, I got into a car accident. And that night, I said, something told me to stay my little black behind home. So I would say, in your decision-making trust, because that is God. I knew that was God. Now I know. I didn't know that back then. Now I know that's God. So if you feel uneasy about a situation or you feel good about a situation, like follow and trust your instincts because it's, that's that's God. <laughs> Normally I'm, t t t t you know, speaking to you. Um, and yeah, and honestly, this is going to take practice. It's like riding a bike. You're going to get up. You're going you're gonna to get on it. You're going to fall, but you'll get stronger. And, you know, you'll learn about your skill sets and your boundaries. You'll learn about your attributes. And that might take time, especially for young women who are in their teens. And they're like, girl, I, know. I didn't become confident until 2018, probably, like, you know. So, and that was well in, into my 30s. So I say that to say, and I think a lot of women who are older, understand that man the woman i was at 18 the, the girl i was at 18 21 she mm -mm, uh -uh. <laughs> you know i was not her i wasn't who i am now so i say give yourself grace um you're gonna have your good days you're gonna have your not so some days are gonna be better than others but yeah and the last thing um differentiate who you are with what you do this generation we have put our work our meaning and accolades and, and bags and vacationing and followings and what you do and who your man is and how many monies, uh, you know, how many hundreds of dollars you have. No, you're not your circumstances. You're not your failures. You're not your seasons. You're not your relationships. Um, you have to find what your identity and confidence is rooted in. If it's rooted in those things outside of you, baby, you're going to be, you're never going to be permanently secure. 
Um, so I would say, yeah, know that you have to find out who you are outside of what you do. Um, yeah, you might be a nurse, but that's just what you do. That's not who you are. Yeah, you might have $5 to your name. Yeah, that's just a circumstance you're in. That's not who you are. Yeah, you might have a million followers. So who are you without the followers? Who are you without the fame? And I posted this yesterday on my page because let me tell you something. And a lot of women are not, and I'm going to keep it real because I'm an inspirational homegirl. A lot of those women you see who have everything that you may be wanting, like, oh, if I could just have 10,000 followers, oh, if I could just have the latest TV show, oh, if I could just have the dream job, oh, if I could just have the marriage, then I'll feel good about myself. Oh, if I could just have this car, this money, or this body, I could get that BBL, whatever, then I could feel secure about themselves. Baby, let me tell you, a lot of these women, I have encountered them, I have seen them. And who have all those things that you so desire to want and are still broken little insecure girls trapped in, in 35 and 40 and 30 year old woman bodies. You know, they just mask it really differently. Insecurity can get masked in so many different ways. So I encourage anyone that's listening, man, be comfortable in your own lane, in your own skin, um, because everybody's dealing with somebody. There's not a human being who, who feels on point 1,000% all the time, you know? I'm saying so don't feel like, oh, my God, I need to have this. No, baby girl, you don't need any of that. You are worthy because God says you are. <laughs> you are enough because God says you are. You know, that, that's, that's it. That's where your, your meaning has to come from. And I told you that these answers are going to be a little longer <laughs> than, than normal. But... I wanted to try and get as much out there because I know this is a real hot topic. So Isis, I'm gonna return the question back to you. What steps can people take to have more confidence <clears throat> and trust in themselves? Well, to piggyback on what you said, because that was one of my points too. Like for me, when it comes to confidence, of course I'm still working on it, I'm still finding mm -hmm. it. Sometimes I have to take some social media breaks because to what you said about the BBLs, the cars, the houses, the marriages, the, the relationships, it's just sometimes it's a little overwhelming. And it's just like, oh my gosh, Instagram and Twitter and all of that is made to be seen or to give off the vibe that it's perfect. And it's like, that's so unrealistic. So sometimes I just have to take a step back and be like, okay, my, my life that I'm living is good. I'm happy, I'm healthy, I'm this, I'm that, like, I'm okay. So I feel like that does play a role sometimes into how we feel about ourselves. So I feel like taking social media breaks is good. But the trust, my friend had said this to me the other day and it really stuck with me, especially with this live. The same trust that you give to others is the same trust that you should be able to give to yourself. Because I feel like sometimes you meet people, you're like, I'm telling you my business, I'm making you my friend, because I feel like I can have all this trust in you, and then sometimes they do you dirty, but it's like, when it comes to how you feel about yourself, how you go about making decisions, you're second guessing, but it's like, if you can so easily trust other people, why are you not putting that same trust into yourself, like, you know yourself better than anybody, so I feel like you should be able to say, nah, I got this, I trust myself, I can make this decision, regardless of the outcome, I'll be good, I'm going to figure it out. So I feel like that also plays a big role. For me, how I look usually plays into how I feel. So I feel like when it comes to self-confidence, you have to take that extra step to, you know, make yourself look the part, I guess you could say. Because you, you know, confidence, sometimes you have a day where you're like, I'm popping to some days. I'm like, mm, I don't feel that way. So maybe I need to put on a cuter outfit. Or maybe I want to do my makeup today because it's going to make me feel good. I feel like those definitely play into confidence. And you taught me this, too, about not letting people have power over you. Kind of like what you said before. Like, if somebody tells me I'm pretty and that is the only way that I feel pretty, the next day if somebody tells me I'm ugly now, that's, like, changing my whole perspective on myself. So, like, I just need to look in the mirror and say, no, I'm pretty because I said so, not because they did. So I feel like those are some pretty good steps, how you can build your confidence. And also journaling. Just even once a day to be like, you know what? I woke up today, I did this, I'm proud of myself. Like the affirmations, I feel like they really do make a difference. And you kind of got to fake it till you make it. If you tell yourself that you are amazing and you don't necessarily feel that way, once you keep repeating it to yourself, you're going to wake up and be like, you know what? I am amazing. And I'm going to take on the day exactly like that. So those are the things that I would tell somebody that was trying to wake up. Got it. I love that. And another thing that I too just want to piggyback on what you said 
we got to understand confidence is not, and I used to think, I low-key believed that, that I would be confident when I was perfect and my circumstances were perfect. That's not confidence. First of all, perfectionism is not real. Mm. <laughs> so it's just like, it's unattainable. So it's like, I don't want people to feel like I have to have it all together mm. to feel good about myself or to feel confident. So like, no, a lot of us are doing a lot better than we think. And I think that was really powerful what you said, Isis, about having other people. You can trust others. You can trust yourself. So that's dope. Mm -hmm. I hope this is helping I, people. It will. I hope so, too. I, I'm, I'm confident it will. Mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. So my next question for you is, how do you combat those insecurities and turn them into self-assurance? Okay. The first thing I want to assure people, and especially my ladies out there, about is that you're not alone. Yeah, like I said, I think we in this in this in this space, especially in these like, this last decade where social media has proliferated into the masses, right? I didn't have to deal with this when I was 16. Baby, I was old. I already had my struggles at 16, figure life out, regular schmegula. So imagine mm -hmm. adding the pressure of all these cameras and phones and having to be on, on all the time so you're not alone. I was actually hearing an interview about, with Michelle Obama and she was asked a similar question and she said listen i struggle with this all the time so mm -hmm. sometimes it's good to know that as women and men you're not alone everybody has their moments of doubt of insecurity of their own selves right so that's the first thing like it's normal you are human you will get through it um then honestly stop letting your feelings decide you know at some point you gotta buck up to your feelings i just mm -hmm. did it um, before this live, I was out here screaming, um, and that's, that's just me. I'm always, I'm always affirming, and I mean, you know, I'm a believer, so I always have a scripture to back up every negative thought. I'm like, ah, that's not what the Bible says. So I think there comes a point where you have to fight back. You can't let your feelings always decide. Now it's okay to feel those things, and this is like, at what point do you get? At what point do you get tired of dealing with that? There comes a point where you like. I don't want to deal with, I don't want to live like this. I don't want to live, you don't, you don't want to live your life in, in doubt and insecurity and letting everything sway you from left to right. So I think it's important to stop letting your feelings aside and to say enough is enough. Come hook or crook, hella hot water. I'm going to get into a better relationship with myself and be self-assured. So that's when you decide to have a good opinion of yourself. It's a decision. Mm -hmm. You know, change is an event. Change is a process, right? And my pastor taught us that, Dr. A. Bernard, shout out to him for um, CCC, but he said, you know, he taught us change is not an event, but it's, pro it's a process, but the catalyst is a decision. Like change comes with it. When you decide if you need to lose the weight, that's the decision. Like, you know what? I got to get out. If you decide that, you know, you want to get out of that relationship, if you decide that you want to start that business, if you decide you want to go back to school, if you decide you want to maybe even leave school and go start a business, whatever it is, that change started with a decision. So I would say definitely make a decision to change. And then by the way you have a good opinion of yourself, like I said in a previous answer, is use your strengths to inspire you. I'm saying, you read out what you wrote, what you like, you're like, no, I am. I'm pretty dope. <laughs> I'm doing a lot better than I, than I think I am. Um, and I like to have a reminder. I like to have pep talks with myself. And I will be like, listen, I'm like, girl, now you know you cannot. You know, the same way I'm going to talk to my best friend. Sometimes you got to talk to your own, be your own hype man. You know, sometimes, honestly, there are times I said, well, I'll post a picture and I don't see it getting likes. And I'm like, y'all are stupid. I know that sounds real arrogant and real mean, but I'm like, people are just dumb because I am fly. And that is, picture is too cute. You know, having a, taking back the power from other people and affirming myself and being self-assured that I'm like, I don't care if two people like this picture. I, you see my profile, I've liked a lot of my own pictures because I think I am beautiful. I think I'm cute. I'm like, oh, she cute? What am So I would say affirming, having steps off with yourself, um, I have post-its in my mirror. As you see, there's post-its behind me. I have just my environment wherever you can. You know, when I wake up in the morning, I'm brushing my teeth. I'm looking at different post-its for me. It's different scriptures, different things that have stuck out that people said that um, I'm like, okay, I need to remember that, right? Because this is, it, it, it's a battle. It's an everyday fight. And then 
Honestly, for insecurities, I would try to identify what's at the root of it. Because you can try to play around with it, but baby, you got to get it to the root. Like, why are they there? What was modeled to you about that thing? Whether it could be about your weight, it could be about your hair. Maybe you have insecurity about how you speak. Whatever it is, you know. I had insecurity being a black girl from the projects. I had a big insecurity at that. Why? Because I was. It was something that I didn't know what what that that was a problem. I was like, I was very happy. I grew up good. <laughs> All you know, for my parents were first. I grew up. Good. I never missed a meal. Never missed anything. But like, how did? And all that stuff. So I knew that was where that came from. And sometimes I would try and a lot of people, a lot of people of color who come from communities that are marginalized and there's a low socioeconomic background, we tend to put our worth in our things. Oh, I'm going to show them. I'm the, I'm, 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 I'm the SHI because I'm going to get these Jordans. And I had all that. I had Jordan. I was always fly. Thank you, grace of God. I was always fly, right? But still, you that again, I didn't master that insecurity. Oh, I'm gonna get, I'm gonna go get that money and show them that I'm successful. That was all rooted in that childhood stuff of you know, you living on the, in the adolescence or when you get older, you live in a project and stuff like that. All that stuff plays with you, so you have to find out what is what's at the root and deal with it. Um, and what triggers your insecurities? I knew that was a very big trigger for me. And it's so funny. My homegirl would be like, Maria, you know, that's the only a problem for you. Nobody else is judging you, but I was judging myself. Mm -hmm. So because of what I would do um, and what that, you know, I was associating Maria's worthiness with what her address was when that wasn't, that wasn't the truth. So that's what I mean. It's like, you got to ask yourself is what you're believing about yourself true. And you know, Man, another thing, well, this is another thing I would say. There's a book I think changed the game for me outside of the Bible. It's called The Gifts of Imperfection by Brene Brown. If anybody wants, I think everybody, every girl, every young woman should see it because she talks about vulnerability and worthiness. And I think sometimes you just got to outsource and get the help, whether it's therapy, books, trusted people that you can listen to. Who She's actually um, a clinic. She's a a researcher so she has she's not just someone who decided to have a podcast right like she's actually someone who this is what she's done this is what she's done she's of the research and it's like okay she i don't want to say she's not she has a phd so she is a doctor i guess but you want to look at read those things that can be helpful to can be helpful and yeah honestly at the end of the day you gotta know that you're enough and that's what that book Sure, I mean, it's like you belong and you are enough. And somebody just posted this, my cousin just posted this the other day, and I thought it was so dope. She said, You better walk in that room like God sent you there. Like, that is like powerful. Whenever you feel like you're not enough, you're insecure, you better act like you in that room, you in that class, you in that relationship, you in that friendship, you at that meeting, you better act like God sent you there. So, that's just what I have. Now, how I know I, this is going to be a little longer than I, I, I anticipated, but how would you go about combating insecurities and turning them into being self-assured? Um, I feel like you really hit the nail on the head, but for me, how would I turn the insecurities into self-assurance? I feel like therapy, even though some people are against it, I feel like it could be a big help, especially when it comes down to unpacking where the root of those insecurities are coming from, because they could be childhood things, they could be from traumatic events that you don't even think could play into insecurities, but they do, and I feel like if you're trying to do certain tips and tricks and that's not helping, I feel like therapy could be a really good option, and that's something that people should explore. Um... Combating insecurities, I had something that I wanted to say, but I don't know how to exactly word it, but when I speak with my friends about the insecurities that I'm having, and they're like, oh, like, uplifting me, and whatever, I'm like, oh, like, you're doing great, and X, Y, and Z, and then when I go home, and I'm like, okay, like, I'm gonna speak out these insecurities to myself, and I know it sounds weird, like, when you're speaking negatively to yourself out loud, this is like, okay, I'm doing this in my head, why am I, what, it doesn't sound right when you're saying it out loud, yeah. and it's like, oh, like, looking at yourself in the mirror saying, I'm stupid, I, I looked at myself, I'm like, what am I talking about, Right. Like, or true. I'm not doing this right, or I'm not, I'm like, that's not true, like, I, I know if I sit down and I map it up, like, I can figure this out, so speaking to myself in those negative ways and like really looking at myself, I'm like, you sound insane. Like, 
you're okay. Like you can figure this out or you are beautiful. Like you are popping. It's just like when you do the negative talk out loud, like you really hear yourself and like, okay. So I feel like if that could work for you, I would say people, people should try it like for sure. And then another thing that I would try is writing it down, but then combating that with something that's positive or like the reverse of it. Like, oh, like I don't feel like I'm intelligent. Give me three to five sentences is why. I need a paragraph because we need to really unpack that. Because when you really sit in it and think about it, it's like, no, but I do know how to do this thing. Or I am, I do like the way that I look or whatever the case may be. I feel like if you speak about it in a negative sense and you're like, okay, this doesn't sound right. How can I make this right? And then turning it into something positive, I feel like that's a good thing to try to do. But I feel like everything you said is very true. I agree with everything that you put. I love everything. Every bit of what you said, that was so powerful. You really became your inner saboteur. Yes. And you realize how silly yes. it sounds. You're like, wait, this is not true, right? And again, there's power in your voice. Mm-hmm. So I think that's so dope. And I'm actually going to go, it's, what you said is part of one of the books that I'm going to share because that's what as we teach the girls. So remind them, this is something you like to see. You like what we're saying. We teach this to our young woman between July 8th and July 19th mm-hmm. at Embrace Alexi like Academy. You can apply at EmbraceAlexi.com backslash, backslash EHL Academy for young women ages 14 to 19. So it might be you, it might be your little sister, it might be your daughter, it might be your niece. <laughs> but this is what we're teaching, um, plus more. <laughs> mm-hmm. Commercial break. <laughs> so I feel like when we're having, like, insecurities, you know, there's things that we're already feeling. But mm-hmm. what are the best ways that you can counteract your inner saboteur or those moments of self-doubt when they're, like, right in the moment, like, happening right now? <laughs> I think you did a good job, right? But I think, right, in those moments, like, you're going to have to have your arsenal of weapons ready. Mm -hmm. Like, this is why you need practice. So when you go to war, you don't just show up on a battlefield. Somebody told me something the other day, and he was like, "Um, we all on the same, we all have the same, he was like, we all on the field, we all on the field, pretty much we all have the same, we're all fighting different battles, but we're all on the same field, right? So everybody's going to have to have some type of battle, but you don't just go to battle like, unprepared this is why you have your your arsenal and that comes with Mm -hmm. practice so i think you should have things in place already so that when those thoughts come up you you see how isis you just said i you go into the mirror and you speak out those negative thoughts so that when in the moments happen and you like wait a minute this is probably the dumbest thing i am probably (laughs) making you know so in the moment so i would say first and foremost like learn i love the i did that file Right, and we know about the I did that file. So for those of you who don't know, um, we teach something, I call it the I did that file, where every day, well, it's just started in 2019, where every day at the end of my day, I will write down all the success, all the things I got done towards my dreams. So it's towards, towards certain mm-hmm. things, right? And I would just keep track every day, every day, every day. In those moments when I felt the insecurity or the self doubt, I'm like, well, let me pull out my receipts. Your I did that file is like a receipt of all the things you've accomplished. So I think that's a good thing to remember. Stop and remember about all the things you have gotten through, all the things you have accomplished, all the things times you thought you wasn't gonna and you weren't good enough and you were. So I would use that to like bring it back to remembrance. Um, I would honestly also stop being judgmental towards yourself mm-hmm. and have a little bit more compassion for ourselves. A lot of us, like if we make a mistake, especially in a moment, it's like, oh my God, baby girl, everyone make a mistake. So stop being judgmental to yourself and show yourself some grace and compassion. Being judgmental literally means to criticize or condemn someone from a position of assumed moral superiority. We don't like other people judging us, but we do a good job of judging ourselves. So a lot of times, some of us got to forgive ourselves. Mm -hmm. Some of us have to forgive ourselves for how hard we have been ourselves, how we have talked to bad about ourselves to our, you know, but you talk bad about you to you. Um, And honestly, you got to learn to forgive yourself for not knowing what you didn't know before you learned it, right? Mm -hmm. So sometimes, let's say you in a meeting, and you say a wrong, or you say something incorrectly. And you're like, oh my God, I'm so stupid. Da, 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 da. It's like, girl, did you know 
how to do that before the meeting? No. So forgive yourself. You didn't know. You didn't know that you weren't supposed to. Maybe you made a, 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 a maybe you made a faux pas at the job and something happened. You're like, oh my God, I'm you're such an idiot. Did you know? No, you didn't know any better. Or you can be beating yourself up about a relationship that you were in. It's like, no, you didn't know any better. You just did not know any better. For forgive yourself for not knowing any better. Stop trying to think you gotta be little Mrs. Perfect. So um now. This is where I want to go into what I learned from this book, another one. Cognitive Behavioral Therapy. This is actually recommended by my therapist and it actually did a good job. Um, one of the things that the author talks about is when you're dealing with negative thoughts about yourself and negative self-talk, um, he says, first identify and describe the problem. So if you're having these negative self-doubt thoughts about yourself, first of all, identify and describe it and pay close attention to when you're feeling those thoughts, what changes in your mood. I used to see made a good point. Sometimes I need to take social media breaks. That was probably identifying and describing the problem. Sometimes when I'm scrolling on social media, I get to feel in these ways, boom, right? And it gets you feeling self-doubt, right? There have been times I have come off of a day, baby, I didn't, I didn't kill three meetings, da, 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 I get on social media and I'm like, my life is you know, so you got to identify and describe the problem for you. Second part, set goals. What do you want to feel more of, right? Focus on setting reasonable that goals that are good. So if you already are feeling self-doubt, you want to set goals where you're feeling more confident. And what does that look like for you? What and What's going to bring you confidence? When you hit a goal, that, that like... It like ignites your confidence. When you hit a goal, whether it's financial, whether it's social, emotional, whether it's family or, or relationship or something, you're like, oh my God, I feel good. You feel accomplished. You feel good about myself. You're so like, dang, I didn't know I was going to do that, but I did it, right? So set some goals around how what you want to start feeling more of. And then another step is identify obstacles. So a lot of times we're in these situations what's what's the obstacle of you feeling good about yourself sometimes it's people sometimes it's people that you can't share your dreams and your goals and your aspirations with so identify those obstacles what's in the way of you getting there sometimes you know it might be an environment sometimes you got to get out honestly i'm a firm believer that there are certain environments that are just not good for you and in order for you to become the person you need to be you need to get out that environment period I'm, I'm a firm believer that you could be a concrete in a rose, baby, but there's a there's a, a rose in the, you know a rose growing out of concrete. But there's a time you gotta put that rose in some good soil. <laughs> so you might have to like I don't know what that looks like for someone. And I wasn't even planning on saying that, so maybe that's for somebody. And maybe you needed to hear that you just gotta get out of the environment that you're in. Um, and finally, challenging intrusive thoughts because that's what you were talking about. This is what these are. And what you said is writing down. So it's like the right, the positive affirmation. So it's something called, you can have, keep a thought journal, but the first thing, so you're going to write one for the thought. So let's say you're like, ah, the thought is telling you you're a failure because you didn't get the job, right? That's the thought, right? And then one's the evidence for the thought. Okay, you didn't get the job. Right. Then you want a, another evidence to get this thought. It's like, well, what makes me a failure? Yeah, I didn't get that job, but I have four more job um, interviews coming. Right. And I feel confident that I can at least land one of them. Then you create a new alternative thought. Like, I'm not a failure. Yes, I did not get the job. That does not make me a failure. But, you know, I have more interviews coming down the way. So, you know, I'm going to keep it pushing. So, so that, that, that's, that's what I would say about like just tangible ways to um, counteract those things. And baby, you know, I'm a believer, so I love a good list of scriptures because it's nothing like the word of God. Um, but if, if, that's, if, if you share that faith, like I always hold up my feelings to what God says and what did God say? That's what I tell myself. It's so funny. I was actually just watching a, a sermon just called what did, what did God say? So at the end of the day, for me, I can't count on me all the time. <laughs> that days I'm like, oh no, but baby, when I get it, I'm like, what did God say? That's gonna walk me through those feelings of not feeling good enough or not feeling worthy. So, what about you? How would you counteract thoughts of self doubt 
um, for self doubt, sometimes depending on the situation in which you're feeling self doubt, I would say step away. Like for an example, if you're a student and you're writing an essay and you're having like a funky or just the words are just not coming out, the paragraphs are not paragraphs on like how they're supposed to, and it's like okay, I feel like a failure. I'm not gonna get this done in time. Sometimes it's best to just step away for a second, like from the thing that's making you feel doubtful. It's like all right, maybe you just need to close your laptop for 20 minutes regain your thoughts and go back to it you can't do that in every situation of course but when it applies i would say definitely just step away for a second and give yourself some time some grace that's really important also i feel like kind of like what i was saying before with the if you can't you the trust that you put in others is the same that you should put into yourself the way that you would not want someone to speak to you is kind of like the same way that you should not want to speak to yourself like you wouldn't want anybody to tell you that you're stupid or that you're ugly. So it's like, you shouldn't want to speak like that to yourself. It's easier said than done, of course. But I feel like that's a great way to think about. I'm being so... Yes, I went out. Okay, you're back. You're back. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I wouldn't want someone to speak to me in that way. Like, I would fall out with somebody if they were to speak to me that way. Mm-hmm. But you can't fall out with you. So it's like, the only thing that you can do is say, okay, there's a problem here. I need to figure Mm -hmm. and I feel like that's the first step when it comes to insecurities understanding that there is something there and saying okay I want to get rid of this and I feel like that's a really good action to like counteract the self-doubt if you know that there's something there you can at least say okay now I know that I need to take the steps to fix it and then that goes to question number one what steps can you do to figure out your confidence so I feel like that's true too and I know there's different faiths out there, but for me, when I'm having a really doubtful day, I pray about it. I cry about it. And I feel like that really helps me. That's the way that I physically get the doubt out. I cry it out. So, honestly, try it. It helps. Baby, I'm good for a good cry. I'm good for a good cry. And I've been having I've been having a few of them lately. And I'm just like... And people say that's weakness, but I know me and my temperament. It actually, uh, my temperament says you have to cry it out. And I am a firm believer. Sometimes you just got to cry and mm-hmm. take a beat. I love that. I love that. Yeah. If your voice doesn't know how to say it, sometimes your tears will. Woo! That, girl, that was a sermon right there. That was a sermon <laughs> right there. If your voice does not know how to say it, sometimes your tears do. Oh, Jesus. That was good. <laughs> Well, I want to, you know, dabble into now the rejection part of this live because I feel like it's something that we should definitely touch on. How can you gain motivation and confidence to build yourself back up when you've been rejected? Whether it's a job, a relationship, how do you work on that? Nobody likes rejection. I don't know. People do, (laughs) right? And I feel for people who are industries who where they're constantly getting rejected, like actors and actresses, and you're going up for roles, and it's like, no, 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 no. Um, and I hear no's a lot. I hear mm-hmm. no, I hear no's a lot. I'm, I, I get the, unfortunately we, you know, I get that. I used to take those so personally. Now I don't. And I have kind of like a system in place for that. And the first thing is I take a moment and acknowledge how I feel. Right. And I actually, we actually did a video on this. It's on our YouTube page, how to deal with disappointment. If anybody was like a four or five minute video, cause last year I had this opportunity that didn't fall through and I was, I was not, I was, I was disappointed for like a day and I don't like a two, two days. And that's not me. Normally I'm disappointed for like, uh, and I, but that one I was really looking forward to it. And, and, and it's just fell through. Right. So first to take a moment, acknowledge how you feel, take a beat. Like I had to back off. And I think sometimes we as women, especially being the strong black woman stereotype, which I'm so over, we think like, oh my God, I'm supposed to act like whatever. It doesn't No, I had to acknowledge at that point that I was like, oh, I was disappointed. This opportunity didn't pan out the way I expected to. So first and foremost, acknowledge how you feel. You're okay. It's okay to feel those feelings. You just don't stay there. And the process to get back up is first remember that you're not your circumstances again just because you got rejected you didn't get the part the job um you know someone broke up with you whatever you didn't get you were voted class president whatever you are not that circumstance you are not it's just a season it's just one experience you're not that um take 
depending on what level the rejection is for me and the opportunity, I had to take a beat. And what I meant was I took time to do nothing. And that's not easy for me to do. Um, and I had to take my time to, so it was an opportunity. I thought I was gonna get it. So let's say when I realized I wasn't, I was just feeling those feelings. That night, I took the time and I watched the movie that had absolutely nothing to do with anything. I could not look at anything embraced. I could not look at anything work-related, baby. I was Netflixing some movie that was really cute and good. And it just got me into a good space. It got me into this is Maria. This is what I love watching like black love romantic movies. It was one of those. Took a moment. And what did I do? I rested. I slept that night. I slept that I think the movie ended up watching me. I went and I went into it. And I, the one thing I asked God, I said, God, just help me to sleep well. And when I slept and I rest well, I woke up and I felt refreshed. I felt reinvigorated and I felt renewed. And I was able to then write down what I was feeling. I was like, okay, what am I feeling? And I wrote down what I was feeling and why I was feeling that way. And then ask yourself, what did that experience teach you? In this particular instance, it was, it was like career job related. Um, and it taught me because the opportunity wasn't on my radar. It came on my radar, then it you know went away. Um, and I said, wow, this experience taught me that these are the type of opportunities that I would love to explore. And I would add another, not only income stream, but add another skill set to my resume and my repertoire of work. And after I did that, and then I asked myself, or ask yourself, is there anything you could have done differently? Sometimes there isn't. In this situation, it wasn't. There was nothing I could have done differently. It just wasn't panned out. But if you can't ask yourself if it's a job, if it's a relationship, do some self-assessment. Like, sometimes it be you. <laughs> sometimes and that's hard to say, but sometimes it be you. <laughs> and I'm going to say it again, ladies, because sometimes, ladies, we act like it's always them. No, sis, it was you. <laughs> it was you. So ask yourself what you could have done differently, what you can do better next time. Like, you know what? I was maybe in a relationship situation, you can say, you know what, you can take accountability that you were insecure and you were checking that person's phone and you were just disrespecting that person's boundaries because you were insecure. Maybe in a job interview, you didn't get it, you didn't do your research before you went on the interview. Maybe, you know, maybe there's nothing you could do and you just got laid off at your job, you know? So I would just say, try to assess and then implement those changes. Write it out, assess it out, take a beat, okay? get back up again and I'm and I'm gonna try again and and that's pretty much it like it's like a routine because rejection is a part of the game it's a part of life you're not gonna get you're not gonna win every basketball game you're not gonna win every tennis match you're not gonna get accepted to every school you apply to you're mm -hmm. not gonna get every scholarship you're not gonna get every job you're not gonna get every internship I have a friend who literally went on like dozens of interviews before she got a job that she really wanted right for like over a year you know, so it's just like, sometimes you got to be, and one thing that we did in that time, we took a vacation. That helps too. <laughs> so sometimes if you that keep, always helps. it helps, it helps because we all needed to take a beat at that moment. So again, getting, but she needed again, rest and restoration. So you have to identify your experiences, if, especially if it's a goal, like a job that it may take, you know, some time a relationship, you're still not finding the right one or whatever, you're building an organization, you're trying to build your business, whatever it is that these things that may a little, these long, these, these goals that may take a little bit more time, definitely you're going to experience rejection. So have systems in play so that when it happens, you're like, okay, let me Netflix and chill tonight. <laughs> or let me let me get on a vacation or let me call my homegirls do something restorative like to get you out of it because the last thing you want to do is let that rejection state you know punk you out so mm -hmm. that you can stay there because then you open in the door gates to go into you know sadness and it's like girl you'll be all right <laughs> mm -hmm. what would you say how would you get back up from self from rejection you just said it honestly whenever i feel like something doesn't go my way i'm instantly like i need to 
get something good to eat. Mm. I need to watch Netflix. I need to get away from the thing that made me feel this way. I need to call my homegirls. We need to go have some dinner and do something. Whenever I feel like I've been rejected, I instantly have to do something that's going to uplift my spirits because I know personally that I don't want to stay there. And to anyone out there, I know you don't want to stay there. It's not a fun feeling to be like, oh my gosh, like this didn't go well for me. I feel like you should always implement something positive after you've been rejected. Like even if it's just ordering your favorite meal, I can really change your spirit for sure. So that's number one. Honestly, life's rejections to me is God's protections. I feel like there's something better for you out there. He said no because somebody else, something better is going to say yes. So just be patient. We did that podcast episode about God's waiting room. And I feel like that definitely plays into the rejection portion. It's like, okay, the job said no, but you do have interviews coming up. There's still other job applications that you can dabble into. Maybe you got rejected and you can sit back and be like, you know what? Maybe that company didn't necessarily align with me. Let me try to do some deeper research. Maybe I can find something that actually does work out a little bit better for me. And you never know what could come from that. So I feel like that can definitely build up your confidence. You know what? That didn't work out because it wasn't meant for me. Let me find something that better aligns with me. I feel like that builds my confidence instantly. So I'm like, you know what? It's okay. There are better opportunities out there. There's that, there's not only one job out there. There's going to be tons of them. Just like how you said, your friend was applying to jobs for a very long time and he, she found the one that stuck. So it's like, there is going to be something that sticks. So that's something that gives me that motivation for sure. And just understanding that life is not perfect because there's no such thing as perfection and that there are going, to, we're going to have to take our L's. <laughs> we really are. We're going to have to take take our L's it's a part of growing it's a part of reala- realizing a lot of things about yourself and being okay with the fact that you are going to make mistakes or there are going to be some you know pushback in life and being like okay what did I learn from this what can I take from this to fuel my fire to now push me and get me one step forward to where I really want to be like how can this rejection help me step into the woman that I want to become and I guess Going back to my I did that file can definitely help you gain that confidence. Okay, I didn't get this job interview or maybe my relationship didn't work out how I wanted it to, but I did do this amazing thing last week. or I did do this amazing thing yesterday or even today. So it's like, yes, I had this one negative thing, but I have a thousand positive things to talk about. I feel like that's really important when it comes to rejection. Uh, I agree. I love that. I love that. And you actually took, you actually answered my next answer, but go ahead. Go ahead. I'm going to read Oh, yeah, I feel like we dabbled into it a little bit, but when it comes to the relationship aspect or a job or a friendship, because I feel like people don't talk about rejection and friendship, how can we better handle those type of situations? That is a good one. The, the rejection from a friend. Ooh, mm-hmm. That's good. And in my notes, the first thing I have is rejection is God's protection. Mm. And I agree. And I think that's something we've always talked about. Um, And I need you to, with that, believe that everything's working together for your good. So it may not feel good, but it's working together for your good. Sometimes um, it's best that you're not in a relationship. You don't get that opportunity because you just might not be ready or God is protecting you for something. Mm-hmm. So God may see the whole picture and you over here like, oh, I didn't got the, I don't have the opportunity. You didn't know that that job at that company, they're about to close in six months. You know what I'm saying? Like they're about to lay off half the staff. And the reason why you didn't get that job is because God saw sees that. Obviously, he's the Alpha, the Omega, the all-knowing, all-sufficient one. So that's why you didn't get it, right? You got to trust God. Um, and there's a scripture in Psalm 84, 11. He says, no good thing will he withhold from you. So if it's not, you don't have it, it's because it's not good for you. And I, and I always remember that. I'm like, all right, God, there was actually a situation recently where um, we were supposed to have, and I'll tell you this, we were supposed to have someone else come on the team and she just never replied. And I remember that scripture saying, no good thing will I withhold you. And I said, all right, God, She's not a good situation for us, right? Mm-hmm. And that's that 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 helps in them circumstances where you're like, all right, the rejection, it's just it's it's God's protection. And let me tell you something I, I, I realize. I've been I CEO a lot and I, I think there's there's a lot of things that do behind the scenes that I just I, I don't share. It's not that it's not that I'm not, it's just I'm just whatever. I'm it's the role. 
And this year, I, the first quarter of this year, I spent a significant amount of time doing a lot of infrastructural board work, um, foundation grant proposals, a lot of things that are like on the higher level. Um, and I was applying for some grant funding that I had previously applied for years prior. And I'm the queen of a copy paste. I keep all our files in the same area. So I was looking at the new proposal that I had to write, which I found out was due like a week before it was due. I was like, <gasps> um, but I looked at those proposals that I wrote previously and I said I was not, not ready. And all those times I would get the rejection emails, the unfortunately you can't get the grant. <laughs> I we see those. And I used to take them personally. And now I'm like, God, I was not ready. I read them proposing. This is literally one year ago. And I said, I wouldn't give me that money either. <laughs> like, you know, so sometimes you have to understand that you're not ready. You're just not ready. And another thing, like, don't take it personally, right? If, especially if it's a job. Mm -hmm. Sometimes it mm -hmm. has absolutely nothing to do with you. Sometimes it's just not in their budget. Sometimes it's not in, not the time. Sometimes, you know, um, it's about a team placement situation, right? Sometimes they want to, you know, maybe there's nepotism and they want to have someone on the job that that um, is related to them. Maybe some, you know, the, the CEO is going to have his godson take the role. Don't take that personally. The CEO is looking out for their, their nephew mm -hmm. or their godson. Sometimes it has nothing to do with you. Like recently we were in, it was like the battle of all battles for the interns this mm -hmm. semester, right? It was like these girls came out swinging and we were like, oh my God, like all this great talent. We just didn't have enough slots. There was only two slots. These are the two. And you know, it was like, okay, who's going to work better? Whose strengths match better with whose weaknesses, right? So sometimes it's, it's totally not you. And honestly, it's all, oh, God is all working together for, for, your, for your right yes. I was rejected from a relationship and baby, I took that hard, right? When someone says, I don't want to be with you. And I didn't understand why. And I remember one day, because I thought that that was the person I was going to marry and all this stuff. And I remember one day with tears in my eyes, walking to church, I said, God, I'm going to lay it at the altar because I can't walk and I'm going to trust you. I didn't know that that rejection situation was preparing me for the things and the people and the relationships I was going to experience after. Had I not gone through that, I would have fumbled the ball for the real thing. So mm -hmm. sometimes those rejections are practice. They're just practice so that when the real thing shows up and you like, whoa, 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 I know, I know, I know this play. I know this play because I, I went through it before. And the thing about it is it wasn't that season for you to be on the championship team. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. It's like maybe you fumbled the ball in a situation. Maybe you didn't make the track team, right? Let's look at what's her name? Shakari Richardson, right? Mm -hmm. She wasn't supposed to make it in 2021, baby. But God didn't know 2023 she was going to come out swinging. But what changed about her? She said, I love our interview. She said, I know I belong here. Right? She, the, the, the 2021, the embarrassment, the, oh my God, the whole country's making fun of you because you got caught with weed or whatever it was that she had. And that's why she couldn't make the Olympic team. Now I see how like, she's doing her thing. Again, that rejection, she wasn't ready. And sometimes we may cry and think we are ready for the stages mm -hmm. and the platform. And God is like, you are not ready to even handle the level of significance that I'm going to put you on. So for your protection, no, you're not going to make the team. For your mm -hmm. protection, no, you're not going to be in a relationship. You can't because a lot of us don't even have the character or the, the, the tenacity, the resilience with the tough Skin that you need to be in certain spaces. You want all that millions of followers and you're not getting it because you're not ready because the minute mm -hmm. somebody tells you that they don't like what you're doing, you're going to go cry about it. And that's mm -hmm. what God is like. You're not ready. So, uh, I say that to say like, man, you just may not be ready. But the last thing about friends and people, 
when they decide to walk out of your life, I am a firm believer, and I said this in my in my in the previous slide, you have to let other people practice their free will. You know, if someone chooses not to engage with you, someone chooses not to be your friend, you have to let them practice their free will and let them lead and respect the season because people come into your life, I believe, for reasons, seasons, and lifestyles. So sometimes the season for a friendship may be over, right? That's hard to swallow. Mm -hmm. But in a season of a friendship when it might be over, you want to accept it the same way it's, it's well, it's actually kind of nice. I'm about to say, well, it's kind of weird right now. But in the winter time, you're not going to wear chancletas out. You're not going to wear your flip-flops because you respect the season. In the summertime, you're not going to wear your mink and your fur because you respect the season. You're not going to drink rotten milk. Why? Because if you drink rotten milk, it's going to have a negative effect on you, right? So the same thing with your friendships and you experience or you see rejection in there. You have to respect the season and don't drink the rotten milk. Because it's spoiled. It's out of season. And if the more you try to hold on to people when they're out of season in your life, the more toxic it's going to be for you. And you have to identify that. It might hurt. It's going to be lonely. You're going to cry on your pillow. It's going to be you and Netflix. But you got to learn to understand that if I keep this person in my life and they're rejecting me. Because people tell you how they are. People tell you how they feel about you. And if someone is telling you that they don't want to be with you, they don't want to be your friend, and you continue to engage with them, the only thing you're doing is opening a door for more rejection. Mm -hmm. And trying to love people who don't want to be loved by you. Mm -hmm. The only person you are in is yourself. So I would say, keep it pushing. Mm -hmm. <laughs> keep it pushing. And that's how you deal with rejection. Mm -hmm. You got to protect you. The season is over. Okay. So I would love to know when we're talking about general rejection, how would you deal with it on a more job, personal relationship level? Because I think that's probably where it hurts the most is when like it's like relationships or jobs, anything like that. For me, I can actually speak to this personally because I was in a relationship when I got into embrace in like 2020 and I thought that that was gonna be my husband that was my bookie I was like oh my gosh like I love him and then once like the relationship started getting down to like it's with N and it did end up not working out we ended up breaking up uh he ended up breaking up with me and you know of course I'm hurt I have to sit in that and then after a while you know I'm like I said I like to cry I like to pray I'm praying about it. I'm crying about it. I'm like, I don't understand. Like, I felt like I was so good at X, Y, and Z. And once I got over that, I guess, grieving, grieving period, I was like, oh, baby, you played a major role in that. Like, you kind of played into the rejection, I guess you could say, because mm -hmm. I wasn't ready. Like, I wanted this beautiful relationship, but I was not making it a beautiful space, if that makes sense. Like, I was doing certain things that, you know, looking back, it's like, I wouldn't want to be with you at the time either. Like, you had a lot of things to grow on, and you wasn't ready yet. And I feel like God was like, okay, I'm going to take him out because you need to do your own work. You need to just deal with ISIS and ISIS by herself. And I didn't understand it at the time. But once I got over that, you know, season of being sad, I'm like, no, I needed this. Like, not to say that he was dragging me down or anything, but I feel like when I, um, when we separated, I'm like, oh my gosh, I was, felt like I was just, with him mm -hmm. but it wasn't ISIS like where is she like what's happening mm -hmm. and I feel like I got to work on myself because of the rejection so I say that to say use the rejection as the, to fuel your fire mm -hmm. that happened mm -hmm. to me but I was able to elevate I'm like you know what these are some of the things that I feel like I did wrong in the relationship and now that I see that the next time I get into a relationship I can do it better and I prayed about it I kid you not Maria I was like the next relationship that I get into I'm going to do it better the next time around. And here I am. Let and I did it for a long time. Because I was like, I know I'm not mm -hmm. ready. And he came along when I didn't want a boyfriend. But God was like, no, you're ready. You could do it. And here I am. So sometimes when it comes to rejection, take it. Be sad. Cry about it. But really reflect on the things that you can take from that and what you can use to learn and grow. And God will continue to throw those tests in your face until you learn from them. So if it keeps popping up, don't be like, oh my gosh, no, this is meant for me. Sometimes he's like, no, baby, you got to learn. <laughs> so that's what I would say. I 
I love that. I think you answered that so well and so art so beautifully, so articulate when you said that. Ah, I love that. She said I sometimes I'm just not ready. You're and that's just okay. And that's all right. And I love how you said it showed up when you weren't looking. I don't know what that is. And I know this has nothing to do with the topic, but maybe people can relate. And I want to address that question um, after I make this comment. Mm -hmm. It seems like the best things in life come when you're not looking. Mm -hmm. Whether it's love, relationships, opportunities. My biggest opportunities came when I wasn't looking for them. Like mm -hmm. when I wasn't trying to get on a TED stage, I got invited to do a TED talk. When I wasn't trying to get myself in Forbes, I got in, you know, like that's when I got my Forbes feature or when I wasn't trying to fall in love, here comes somebody just, you know, yanking me off the, off the streets. So mm -hmm. I think like that goes to that something about that when you're just like living, learning from your mistakes, when you're not, when you're going with the flow, mm -hmm. not pushing for the next opportunity, the next job. Um, you know, my, my friend that I said who had the job, who was looking for the job for a year, she ended up getting a new job um, two years ago, right? And it wasn't the salary that she wanted, like her target salary, but it was still a, 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 it was still a good job mm -hmm. for where she was. Um, a couple of months ago, minding her business, someone is like, hey, I think it would be good for this opportunity, for this job. She literally lands the job making her ideal. She's been talking about this number for the last, I want to say, four years, target number that she wanted to make. And she literally fell in her lap. She didn't have to apply. Her resume wasn't even updated. She just walked into the interview, killed it, had confidence in herself. Boom, she got the job. But three, four years ago, it was toiling and, oh, I need to. Oh, my God, I got to apply. You don't get it like that. I, I said something about that. You know, I think when you're just living, mm -hmm. I feel like that, that job. I'm telling you, Isis, I kid you not. There is not one of my, like, big moments, love, relationship, funding, anything that came because I was looking for it. It just came. It's just like, boom, and it's here beauty in that sometimes god is just like no this is not for you i'm gonna put it on your lap see what you do with it beauty is so because you feel seen you feel like oh my god i didn't even know it was even like right. my funnest times out like when i'm hanging out with my friends oh my god i didn't even know i was gonna have this much fun <laughs> you know i needed this like it's like those things that you didn't even know like you just like i'm just going out next thing you know you have the time of your life um so we'd love to know about internships and mentoring yes go to embracelegacy.com backslash join join our team is it join the team join dash our team. dash team okay i just know the <laughs> join dash our dash team um you can definitely learn about internship opportunities and things like that there right and thank you for your kind words like thank you for tuning in and you know enjoying what embrace the legacy does too thank you thank you we love all the support yeah <laughs> mm -hmm. i also mm -hmm. wanted to uh, get into something too because of course being rejected it sucks but what do you do when you are rejecting someone else because i know it's hard to be the bearer of bad news so how do we get comfortable with having to you know reject someone or something okay I don't know where I heard this from. I, my therapist, shout out to her. She said something to me and it resonated. She said, Maria, it's important for you to know that your you need to have your needs met too. Mm -hmm. Your feelings matter. Your needs and your boundaries matter. Like, I need to have my needs met too. Meaning that if something isn't up to your standards, if something is uncomfortable for you, if you don't like something, it's okay. It's okay for you to have that level of um, self-awareness to say, hey, I don't want this opportunity. I don't want to deal with you or whatever. So first you got to like, it's okay for you to have your needs met. It's okay for you to have your boundaries set and respected. Mm -hmm. That's, that's part of life. Um, and how other, another thing my therapist taught me, she was like, Maria, how other people respond to your boundaries is none of your concern. You just set the boundary and all set whatever it is in this case of rejection but do it with class 
don't do it with emotions. Don't do it like, oh, F you, because I think you ugly. That's not, that's not <laughs> nice. <laughs> you know what I'm yeah. saying? <laughs> like, we don't want to do that. But so I would say when I know I'm about to say something that's going to be a difficult conversation, which I'm going to get to in a second, I try to make it as this is when corporate America skills come in. Because it's like you want to start out with something called the sandwiches, start with the positive give the rejection the negative or whatever and end off with parts put something positive so say like express so it's hard for me to say this you know it's it's really uncomfortable for me to say this but you know whatever you need to say so one thing another thing my therapist told me is use i statements instead of you 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 mm. i so it'll be like it's important for me that I feel attracted to someone that I'm dating and you're great. You're awesome. You're amazing. I like, I, you know, I like that you're athletic. I don't know. And I don't know that, I don't know. You like to research stocks at night. I don't know. I don't know. Something that you like about them. Like you're smart, you're athletic, you know, you're funny. I think that's great. But it's also important for me to be physically attracted to someone. And I just don't feel those feelings about you. And I think you're great. You deserve to be with someone who feels that, who's going to give it all because I think you're amazing. And I'm just not the one for you. Right. So I think I'm just going to have to, you know, move forward. My niece, I, I heard her say something to someone. She said, listen, she was like, I'm just not, I don't, I don't want to lead you on. I think you're great, but I'm not in the space to really, you know, engage with you on a dating um, mm -hmm. love level, but I'm willing to be your friend. If you can respect that, we'll just be friends. These are not comfortable conversations. Mm -hmm. You're just going to have to say it in the most tactful, tasteful way and be mindful and considerate of that other person's feelings. Someone I know, he knows that I'm sensitive. And I love, one thing I love about him is that he, even though it's not easy, it's not his second, it doesn't come like me as second nature to be positive and to be sweet. That's not it. <laughs> you know? But he'll tell me, he'll be like, you know what? I know you're sensitive. So... I'm going to say it like this. Oh, he'll, I, I see him trying. He's considering me, right? So mm -hmm. consider the person that you're talking to when you're saying that. And I appreciate him so much when he does that because I'm like, oh, you do love me. <laughs> like, you know, because he understands like reasonable sensitive. So be tactful to, to how you're saying things. Like I said, don't just be like, F you, I don't like you. Mm -hmm. But, you know, be, be sensitive um, to them and or... And honestly, the, the next thing, the, or the last thing, like I said, these are difficult conversations. This is the last book I have. I think everyone should read that. It's called Difficult Conversations, How to Discuss What Matters Most. And this is a really good book to have, like, those difficult conversations where you feel like you're rejecting someone and you want to, like, speak up for yourself. Yeah, so I would definitely speak up. And honestly, y'all, it's just important for you to have, you to live by your values, you to have your needs met, you to you know that's how and you feel and again back to what we said like when you practice things and you'll be confident when you start speaking up and being honest about how you feel and it might involve rejecting people you're gonna feel so empowered you're gonna feel so good about yourself like huh i spoke up <laughs> you know i may have rejected them but Instead of like ghosting, this generation is really irresponsible and very immature with just ghosting or not replying to, you know, emails or, you know, situations I've had people apply for things and then ghost. I'm like, you would have just said you weren't interested. Like no one's gonna, no one's gonna die. <laughs> I'm not, I'm not, it's not that serious. It, it shows value. It shows your character when you don't have the courage or the integrity to be honest with someone about an opportunity you no longer want to engage with or someone you no longer be with. Honestly, you, I, there's, there's a word I was going to use, but I remember I'm saved and I remember that I'm on live, but. <laughs> I have an idea. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I was going to say, you know, if you're from the hood, you know what I mean? And I didn't say it, but you thought it. And that's mm -hmm. what it was. And Father, I'm sorry. <laughs> that's what I feel about that. But how would, how would you deal with, it's not comfortable, um, rejecting people so or an opportunity how would you deal with that without feeling mm -hmm. guilty
for me personally, I never feel guilty. I know there's people out there, they scared, but I, I, when it don't work for me, oh, baby, I, I got to hand it to you. I got to tell you. But I am sensitive, so I am very conscious and aware of how I'm delivering these bad news. Like, of course, you. I've had to reject people before. Like, hey, I just don't feel like this is going to work for me. I have gotten very good at the eye talk because I feel like it's so easy to be like, yeah, you're not doing this for me. You're not doing that, blah, blah, blah. Like, you're a best friend, blah, blah, blah. But I feel like if you can, you know, connect it back to how you are personally feeling, like, I am this, I am that, then I feel like it softens the blow a little bit. And we just, you don't want to be in a space where, where you're personally not comfortable. Or you don't want to be in a space where you feel like it's not aligning with your morals or your values. So it's like sometimes you just have to rip the bandage off and be like, okay, there is a better space for me. There might be a better partner for me or a better friendship for me. I do not have to stay here. The same way that you were like, that people choose to be with you, like people choose to be your partner, you have a choice and you don't have to be in that uncomfortable situation. So I feel like that can help people be like, okay, I'm, I shouldn't feel guilty about this because it's, the, it's better for me. And by doing this, I'm creating an opportunity for the other person to find something better for them because obviously it's not going to work for the both of us. So I feel like when it comes down to having these hard conversations, making that the root of it, like this is for the really the better of the both of us. Even though you might want this, it's not going to work for me. And this is going to be more cohesive with mm-hmm. my party. My friends, I hate little friends. I really do, because, you know, you guys don't see your your homegirls. I don't like it. But when there's reasons and seasons, and I feel like I'm only 22. We're, I'm actively growing. I'm changing every day. So it's like I might be friends with you today, but maybe in a year, our lives change drastically, and I feel like we do need to part ways. And that doesn't change the, all the great memories that we have, all the things that you've helped me overcome, that I've helped you overcome. But you know what? I wish you the best, and I feel like it's time for us to part ways. And there's nothing wrong with that. I feel like just understanding that there's nothing wrong with being the person that is still afraid of rejection. Because there really isn't anything wrong with rejection. It's a part of life. So that's what I would tell someone. I love that. I think you did good. Let me find the ISIS is out here. She said, if I feel I got to say it, oh my God. I must say it. I, I'm sorry. I'm just that type of person. If it has to be said, oh, baby, I'm going to say it. <laughs> I love that. <laughs> oh my gosh. We- Getting down to the last question, y'all. Mm-hmm. Is self venting reliable if there's no one else to vent? I really want to hear your answer to this, honestly. This is, this is I, you sir, I, I've said this self pep talk, right? Mm-hmm. Sometimes I don't mind. It's like, girl, you got to look in that mirror, and like you said, you looking at the, you, you talking your innocent habits on you, like, yeah, I think it's good to have self pep talks, right? Mm-hmm. To pep yourself up. I think we we this that's we don't necessarily grow to the best of our ability that way i think it's good but you also need to have at least one person that you trust that you can talk to sometimes not about everything mm-hmm. there are things i go through that is me and the good lord jesus christ that nobody else needs to go through and i know why because i don't want to taint what I believe God is showing me to do and I don't need your opinions and people love to give their opinions and stuff like that so and I say that to say which brings me to the point circle back to the point speak to someone that you trust or who loves you and let them know what you need sometimes one of my, my sometimes someone just told me this and I thought it was powerful she said when people talk to me I ask them do you want me to just listen or are you looking for my advice mm-hmm. game changer there are times that i just want to vent right mm-hmm. i there are times i'm like baby just just i just want just let's let's put out the strawberries and the chocolates and you know let's have maybe maybe there might be a glass of wine in the room with but girl i just came to just vent i don't mm-hmm. want y'all's advice and that's what you need to do and when you're talking to people give them a boundary recently i just did that to someone i was like i just need you to listen I don't need advice. And I asked someone, I think yesterday, I was like, well, what do you want? You want my advice or do you want me to listen, right? So because sometimes people just need to get it off, right? And I don't think it's reliable to always get it off on you because sometimes you just need to get it out. 
this weekend i had a moment maybe i was in here i had a moment i needed to get it out and my homegirl called i called my homegirl she was like sis just go to sleep rest you needed to get that out and because she was like sometimes it's not good to just leave it all in right so you get it out it's an outlet God didn't create us to do life alone. He created us to do life in community. So like I said, if it's just one person. Now, sometimes that one person might be a therapist. And I highly suggest that because a therapist is a, coming from a non-judgmental zone. Mm -hmm. They're a good place to listen. They can see things that you don't. So I would definitely suggest that. And finally, my favorite, we already talked about it. Talk to God about it. Let me tell you, God is right there listening to me, and I will really talk to him because he's my dad, he's my best friend, and I'm like, Father, did you see that? I'm feeling this way. Am I bugging? <laughs> like, you know, or like, just just vent it out or cry it out to him. When you had, like you said, I thought that was powerful. You said sometimes when you don't have the words to say, your tears will speak it all. So, and sometimes when you feel like you really don't, you do. He's right there, and he's waiting, and he's listening. And he cares enough to respond. It may not be in that moment, but trust and believe. He cares enough to respond. And that gives me the hope of all hopes. That when I'm feeling those ways, I'm like, let me talk to you. <laughs> let me talk to you about what I'm going through. So that's what I would say. What about you? This is an interesting question about self-venting. How do you feel about it? For me... I know a lot of people are like, oh my gosh, I don't talk to myself. I do. Mm -hmm. and I do sometimes when I'm going through things and I'm just like, I need to just speak it out mm -hmm. loud. So I'm like, am I bugging? Like, she said this to me, but I really just don't understand. Like, why? Blah, blah, blah. I really do that a lot just so that I can pinpoint things into the conversation. And honestly, me personally, I know everybody's faith is different, but I never truly feel like I'm alone because when I am self ending, I know that he's mm -hmm. listening. So it's like, he hears me, he sees me, and it's going to pop up again later in my life. And I'm going to figure out, okay, maybe I wasn't bugging or maybe I was. He's showing me exactly what. Um, honestly, I would say if the people that you keep in your circle, if you feel like you can't vent to them, you need to unpack that. But I feel like you need to have, have at least one person that you be like, I need to just yap to you about this. But one thing I will say when it comes to venting, you also want to make sure that the person you're venting to can Take what you are carrying. And I feel like a lot of people don't think about that. Like, oh my gosh, I need to call, I need to tell you this. But it's like, sometimes the other person will be like, hey, I don't even have the mental capacity for that. So then the self-venting does come into play. You know what? I need to be comfortable with being and sitting in these feelings by myself. So I feel like they're both extremely important because there's going to be times when you really don't have anybody that you can mention. People might be busy, whatever the case may be. So I feel like they're both very beneficial. But when you do have the opportunity, definitely take it to speak to somebody. Because when they, when you want advice, when there's time, you, of course, you want somebody to listen and you want advice, they might have something to say or they might have a perspective that you didn't even think about. Mm -hmm. Because sometimes so brain is better than one. So that's how I feel. Self-venting is extremely important. But there's also times where you do need someone to listen to you, give you advice, or just hear you out, let you cry, do your thing. And then you can go about it the next day. Go to sleep, have a glass of wine, like you said maybe have something that you like to eat and then wake up the next day and be like, okay, we're going to come back this. We're going to go about this differently. And that's it. Yeah. That's really it. I love that. Yeah. I think it could be, yep. Like you said, sometimes you need to rock it out. And I learned that a lot in my journey as an entrepreneur. I'll be very honest that in that time I learned how to really, I've always been private to a certain degree. And people don't understand that because again, like, yeah, you say your business, I, I share what I want to share when I want to share. Mm -hmm. But I've been very, since I was young, always been one to go to God first. Even when I didn't have the relationship that I have with him now, I always to be like, yeah. And it was because I felt like I couldn't trust people. That's another thing with venting to people. You also want to talk to people you can trust. Mm -hmm. I shouldn't tell you something and then it ends up on the cover of the family newspaper, mm -hmm. you know, because one of the best gossipers are your own family members, uh -huh. right? <laughs> so, you know, so it, and I will like say, when you're in a friend group, uh -huh. when you tell one friend and the whole friend group finds out, it's like, no, I was telling you and just you. Mm -hmm. That's important, so don't be that person. Mm -hmm. If they're confiding in you, let them confide in just you. Good. 
perfect. I says, I just in my last couple of years have learned to honor that in a in a from a level of integrity. Cause sometimes you think you don't think you're doing wrong. You're like, well, you told me, blah, blah, blah. Now it's like, no, and again, someone else, he is so tight. He's so tight lipped with things and it annoys me but it it inspired me like damn you really not saying anything like no that's not my business to share you know so i think that we have to learn to trust other people and respect when people do to us as to vent to us to not go tell the next person to be like, oh girl you know so i think for me i've learned i i don't i i i'm discerning of who I decide to share certain things with at when and where. So I think it's important for people to be discerning of who you're sharing because some people send a lot of, another pet peeve is when I'm talking to you, you're not listening. Like that's a pet peeve of mine. If I'm, I'm crying and you talking about, huh? Cause you looking at Netflix, I'll be like, I'll call you back. <laughs> yeah. Forget it, the tears are gone now. It's just like, you know, forget it. Good night. You know, so the, to your point, I says you want to make sure people have the capacity mm -hmm. to listen. Um, and and the oh, something I didn't share. Uh, so I write. I don't know if this is self venting, but journaling is my jam. When I'm feeling something, and my homegirl makes fun of me because I'll be like, "Let me get my notes." When I'm about to have a difficult conversation with someone, before I have a difficult, let's say if someone did something where I may feel hurt, offended, angry, whatever, I have my notebook and I have my journal, right? And I will sit there and I will write, I'm going to read what are you feeling, pinpoint what you feel. I have a whole conversation with myself and then I sit and then I wait for the opportunity to bring it up to the person that I may have an issue with. Mm -hmm. So I don't do it right then in the moment because I'm like, okay, this is not going to work. So I think that's a good way of self venting is writing down when you feel hurt or rejected, you're feeling the self doubt, whatever it is that you're feeling, to write it out. I think that's a great way because now you can be like, right, what? What am I really feeling? I do that and deal with it a lot. In my notes, I don't necessarily write it out, but I do do it in my notes. Mm -hmm. And when I have to have that conversation with somebody, because I wrote it out and I got those emotions out, I feel like I could be way more rational. And whatever I did write it out, I'm like, okay, I got an idea of how I'm feeling. And now I can relay that message to you in a way calmer, better way, because I'm not speaking off of emotion. I'm just speaking off of logic. Yeah. And I know what I'm talking about. So I feel like that's extremely important. Yeah. Because you can just yap at the mouth and be like, oh my gosh, I'm upset about X, Y, and Z. And sometimes it could get misconstrued. It could get messed up. It could mess things up in your relationships, like friendships, job, anything. So writing it down can really make or break some of the conversations yeah. that you have. Yeah, I am. I've done it so many times. So writing it down and identifying the mm -hmm. right time to bring it up. I know with certain people, bringing it up at that time is not going to work. But mm -hmm. if I write it down, I bring it up the next day, two days later, I, we're calm, we're cool, we're mm -hmm. collected. Um, maybe, and another thing, and especially to our audience, when it's like the we something hours in the morning, that's usually not a good time. It's 2 o'clock in the morning, y'all been arguing, that's not mm -hmm. a good time. 3 o'clock in the morning, wait till the next morning, get off the phone, revisit the conversation. You should want to preserve the relationship more than feeling like you want to be right, and that mm -hmm. that is like you got to get over that. And it's like you know what? I'm learning I'm that. Oh, oh, <laughs> I'm learning that. Yeah, you have to be willing to do that. So I think timing and reflecting on yourself and that I said so. It's I want everybody to try that. The next time you have to have a difficult conversation or you feeling something, write it out, write your feelings, take a moment, take a beat, walk away and then come back with your notes gathered. One of my homegirls, she laughs, because I'm like, all right, let me get my notes. She's like, oh, you in these notes. I'm like, yep, I have my notes. She knows that when I'm about to have a difficult conversation, professional, personal, I have my notes. <laughs> so yeah, I think that's, that's dope. Well, that was our last question. We was, you know, staring away from the questions a little bit, but it's okay. I feel like we gave the audience exactly what they needed. I hope this helps somebody out there. And just know that you are good enough, okay? Yeah, that was so good, Isis. I think this is by far one of my favorites. Yes. I don't think we've ever gotten. We talked about relationships, mm -hmm. career, mm -hmm. boss woman, 
family, the holidays. So mm-hmm. we never tackled this. And I, I want, I would love to continue talking about these conversations. But yeah, mm-hmm. we did a good job. Like I said, if y'all like what y'all hear for the young ladies, um, for our legacy girls, as we call them, the young ladies, our legends in the making, we have our Embrace a Legacy Academy. Please feel free to go and uh, apply at embracealegacy.com backslash KHL Academy. Those girls who complete our program then qualify for our college scholarship tuition. Um, and then if you like what you see and you want to actually like do the work we have different tools and online courses we have workbooks um, ebooks master classes that you can download at patreon.com backslash embrace her legacy is there anything else that we have coming up we have some other stuff but we can't talk about that yet, yeah not, is there uh, yeah y'all hear it soon but <laughs> we got other stuff coming but i think that's pretty much it oh and if you're watching please subscribe or follow like come on now. right if you right. want to see more of us just hit the follow button <laughs> just hit the follow if you're watching on youtube because we put this on youtube please hit the subscribe and mm-hmm. help us hit our goal follow us on tiktok as well for my youngins um uh, i don't want to say only the young is on tiktok but i know gen z is y'all on tiktok we love- hard i know so we are on tiktok as well um at embrace her legacy and if y'all have any ideas for any other lives similar to this we're one, open to it if you have something that you need us to talk about you need some homegirl inspiration some advice we yeah. got you yeah we got you we set it up in a way because i'm the millennial she's the gen z so we're gonna call this like the gen Zennial conversation <laughs> <laughs> i like that I like that. <laughs> <laughs> That's what this is. All right. But all right, ladies. I like on Wednesday. Our next live is next week. We'll be back next week. God willing. Um, make sure you're following us on the gram to get the alerts of what the next topic will be. Until then, good night. Good night, everyone. Bye.